If you're looking to make stickers, this video is for you. Whether it's for your small business or just for fun, there's a lot of different ways to make stickers and I've gone through a lot of ways over the years of me running a store online and selling stickers for a few years. And I'm going to tell you all the different ways I've made stickers and ways I want to make them and how you can make them at home. All you basically need to make a sticker is the paper you're going to print the sticker on and something to cut the sticker out and you need a printer as well. So first of all, you have to decide what type of sticker you want to make. There's two types of stickers. There's a kiss cut and die cut stickers. Kiss cut is basically what you see on a sticker sheet where you can peel the stickers off the sheet and the blade actually only cuts through the sticky part of the paper and not the backing. So that's a kiss cut. Die cut is pretty popular. It's a custom shape that's cut all the way around the sticker completely through and you have this like cute little shaped sticker. I personally don't really make kiss cut stickers anymore. It just takes a lot of work and sticker sheets end up having to be sold at a little bit of a higher price because there's a lot more stickers on it and I just find that die cut stickers have always sold better for me but um, everyone's store can be different. And there's also different methods to make a sticker. One of the ways that I think everyone sort of starts with is to print on sticker paper and cut it out yourself with scissors. This is totally a valid way of making stickers. I made stickers like this for like a year or so. I cut out so many stickers by hand, like probably hundreds of stickers. You can also use a cutting machine to cut out the stickers and I'll show you how I use the Cricut that I have. And the third way is to order your stickers from a manufacturer. Um, this is also a good way. There's pros and cons to this method. The pros for ordering your own stickers is that there's lots of different options for the paper. You can get like clear stickers, holographic, glow in the dark matte, glossy, you can choose what finish you want and you don't have to make them yourself and they tend to be really good quality compared to the kinds of stuff you can make at home. The cons of this method is that it's more expensive and you have to wait a few weeks to get the stickers sent to you. Another way you can make stickers is thermal stickers, which is basically if you have a thermal label printer, you can put stickers through it. You can actually buy rolls of like shaped thermal labels and design a black and white sticker design and put it through your thermal label printer. I actually did this with my printer from Munbin. Munbin actually sent me um, their label printer a few weeks ago and I've been using it to package my orders and it works great for printing off shipping labels but I also have been using it to make stickers and labels to go on the outside of packages and it's a lot cheaper than like using your actual printer to print labels and stick them on and it's extremely fast. I designed a little bird sticker and Munbin actually sent me a couple different like shaped labels. They sent me some pink circles, blue circles, and some blue rectangles and pink rectangles. And I tried printing on the pink circles, my little bird design, and I printed so many so quickly. So if you have a thermal label printer, you can easily make like black and white sticker designs to like decorate stuff or to go on the outside of your packaging with the label printer. And the, th the thing about thermal label printers is that it doesn't use any ink, it just uses heat to create the black lines on the paper. So the paper itself has to be compatible with the label printer. I use the Munbin label printer with my Shopify store to print labels. And I'm gonna be using it also to make like all my packaging stickers and design like little little designs to go on the outside of my orders. The one they sent me was a, their four by six inch thermal shipping label printer, the 941 standard. And I have it in white because I like to make all of my like appliances be white or neutral colored because my room is really small and I just find it makes my room less chaotic. If you wanna grab the Munbin label printer. I'll have a link in the description and also I will link the little like shaped labels that, that they sent me, the colored ones. They also have yellow and I think yellow is really cute but some of my envelopes are yellow so I didn't want to get yellow but I'll link all those in the, in the description. Just make sure it's compatible with whatever shop you use and if you don't use a shop and you just want to make cute little stickers with it, that works as well. Basically, the main types of stickers you can make are kiss cut stickers, die cut stickers, and thermal stickers. 
which you have to have a thermal printer for. You can print it yourself and cut it out with scissors. You can print it and cut it out on a cutting machine, or you can order them from a manufacturer. So those are the main ways to make stickers. If you are interested in making your own stickers with a printer, like an inkjet printer, I think is the kind most people have because laser colored laser printers are really expensive. The printer I use is the Canon Pixma Pro 100. And I generally use the Photo Paper Direct glossy sticker paper. I've used the matte sticker paper in the past just because I can order it from Amazon really easily. And I have the Cricut Explore Air, just like the first version, I think. So to make stickers with an inkjet printer at home, the first thing you need is any type of printable inkjet vinyl sticker paper. I find that printable vinyl is a good option for stickers because otherwise you're just kind of getting like printer paper that's sticky and it's not really durable at all. So I use the Photo Paper Direct sticker paper. You can also use the Cricut printable vinyl. You can order from online labels and there's also other places, but make sure it is compatible with inkjet printing. And not every printer actually accepts printable vinyl to be fed through it. I think most do. Like most cheap office printers will actually print really nicely. The only con with office inkjet printers is that the ink is really expensive, but it, it will still work and it actually is quite a nice print. And that brings me to the next point. You will need a printer, any color printer, unless you want to make black and white stickers and any black and white printer. Just make sure whatever paper you're using is compatible with the type of printing because there's inkjet and laser jet. I think there's also a bubble jet, which I don't really know what that is, but make sure the paper will work with it. Because if you buy laser paper, it's not going to really look good going through an inkjet printer. You will need scissors or a Cricut machine or a silhouette machine or like any of those typical cutting machines to cut your stickers. And if you're making thermal stickers, if you have a thermal label printer, you'll need whatever paper you're going to use for the sticker. And usually they'll just come pre-shaped. So I have circles, rectangles, and you'll need a black and white design. And you just print the photo from your computer, select the printer that you're going to be using, and select the size of label and make sure you input the right template for the size of label. And it prints it so quickly. This is actually like going to change the way I package my orders. It, it's really made the whole process so much easier and it's really nice to be able to print my own like decorative stickers for my packages. So I want to give you some tips for creating your own stickers and making sure that the printing works out, the cutting works out, and I'm going to talk about my process for all of that. So if you're going to cut out your stickers by hand, First, you'll need your design. You can draw your design on paper, on the computer, iPad, digitally, whatever. Make sure you get the image onto your computer. And then you wanna arrange your stickers onto a sheet, usually eight and a half by 11, and make sure you rotate them and nest them close enough together that you're using up as much as the paper as you can so that you're not wasting any, any expensive sticker paper. I like to sort of add a white outline around so I can see how much space is between each sticker and so that you know there's enough room to cut out your sticker. Make sure you set your color profile to CMYK. That's the printing color profile and if you don't change it to that, it's going to print out a lot different from what you see on your screen. So once you convert to CMYK, you might see your colors change a little bit and then you can sort of tweak your colors. I like to brighten my image before I print and saturate it a little bit more, mess with the curves, I find I have to make my color balance, my artwork, way more yellow so that it actually prints the way I want it to, just the way my printer prints things and the way the paper handles things. I use Photoshop for this, but there's lots of free drawing programs that you can use to like edit your artwork. What I like to do is do a test print and just designate one of your sticker papers to being your your test sheet and I like to scale down the, the sticker to print it so that I'm not using up too big of a space on the sheet and print it out check the colors if they're not quite working the way you want you adjust your design a little more test print again and if and since you're printing them off a lot smaller than they'll actually be you're saving 
paper and you'll be able to use the test sheet a lot longer than if you just printed them off full size. Another thing you'll want to do is make sure that you know what size your stickers will be once you print them. I find one to two inches wide is a good size for a sticker, but you're going to want to keep in mind how big you're actually going to print them. So that's just, that's just something to remember. You can just print it off actual size to see how big it will be on like a regular piece of printer paper just to get a, a, a feel for how big your sticker will be. Once you print them off, you just simply get a pair of scissors and cut them all out by hand. I used to do this and it took me so long and my hand would cramp, but I did it and I made so many stickers this way. You can't do kiss cut by hand. You need a, a cutting machine or to order them. Kiss cut by hand is really, really difficult. I'm sure there's ways to actually do it, but it, it's just not really practical to make um, kiss cut stickers by hand. I think it's just a little bit too difficult. You'll need some sort of like blade that, that you can like carve out the design. It's just a lot easier to do die cut stickers by hand. Now the way I do it on a Cricut, it's pretty much the same, except once I have test printed my designs, I export them as PNGs with a transparent background and I have to draw on a white border by hand or whatever color border you want and crop the image to just be that sticker and I add a little bit of wiggle room, a few extra pixels on each side so that it doesn't like crop the white border weirdly. I export those and I, then I have each design as its own PNG with a transparent background and a white border. I import it into the Cricut software and the print and cut feature is what I use. And I think it's 6.25 inches by, no, it's 6.75 inches by 9.25. And that's the area you have to work with. And I arrange all the, all the stickers on that. Print it off, cut it in the Cricut, make sure that it that everything looks good. And then I will start to bulk make all the stickers. If you want to do a sticker sheet, it, the process is a little bit different, but you want to make sure that you have a background color and maybe a header. I haven't done this in a long time. Usually I do two on each sheet and it's, it's best to just cut out the stickers and not actually cut out the entire sheet. I like to just cut the stickers out, peel the whole page off and then use a guillotine or some kind of paper cutter to then trim the sticker sheets down to the actual size of the sheet because otherwise you're dealing with like different cut thicknesses on the Cricut and it, it's just kind of strange to do it that way. I found it never really worked too well for me because when you're kiss, kiss cutting the stickers, you're using um, less of a, of a pressure, but then you have to like re-feed it through to cut out the border of the entire sheet on a thicker setting. And it's just, I find it's just easier to peel the whole thing off and trim it outside of the machine. If you're going to order your stickers, I've actually never done it before, but I'm thinking of now transitioning from making all my stickers myself to ordering them all because I have to make so many every month and I want them to be better quality and to last longer for people. And that way I don't have to spend time cutting stickers because it does take quite a long time. Um, Whenever I order stuff from a manufacturer, especially stuff that is printed on paper or anything like that, I make sure that the colors will print okay and make sure that the border of the sticker is very clean so that it will cut nicely. And make sure your design is not too dark because almost always when you get something printed, it's going to be a little bit darker than what you anticipated. So I like to sort of like preemptively brighten things that I send to printing places and make sure that if it prints a little lighter or a little darker, I'll still be okay with the product. That's kind of like a good way to know that it will print okay. Um, make sure you contact them and ask about what color profiles they would want your artwork in so that you will know what, what to expect it to look like once they actually manufacture it for you. But I haven't, I haven't ordered stickers before, but I really want to. I think that's going to be my method now. But I wanted to share with you all the ways I've made stickers and what I've learned because I've been doing it for a while and making stickers is fun and I know a lot of you probably want to know how to make your own stickers. Thanks to Munbin for sending me their label printer. I really like making stickers with it and using it to package my orders when I actually sell stickers. Um, it just kind of goes hand in hand with everything I do and I can make stickers on it too, which is great. And if you have a label printer, 
for your business, consider getting like circular smaller labels to make your own stickers to go on packaging and stuff like that i i just think it's it's really convenient i think it's a great way to do it i hope you found this video helpful if you're wanting to make stickers these are basically all the ways you can make stickers from home at least all the ways that i would recommend whether you're starting your own business or you want to make them for friends and family, I think there's an option here for you. Let me know in the comments if you've made stickers and how you like to make them. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in my next video.